Hi there. In this video, I'm going to take a break from my usual tutorials um, and actually take a look at ArcGIS versus QGIS. So you might have noticed that I actually switch between these two pieces of software when I go around making my videos. Um, and I think a lot of people often wonder, you know, which of these is the best for me? And there are a number of videos already out there looking at this question, um, but most of them are a year or two old now. And a couple of key things stood out to me when I, I kind of looked at what was already around. Firstly, no one seems to include ArcGIS Pro in the comparison, which is a pretty big oversight now, because actually, in my opinion, it's quite a big leap forward in terms of the ArcGIS offering and has a big impact on the outcome of this question. Um, and the second is that a lot of them seem to be a little bit biased. Um, and I work and have taught with both of these pieces of software. Um, I don't have any links one way or another, so actually it doesn't impact me either way whether you decide to go away and use ArcGIS or QGIS. So hopefully I can give a pretty sort of even unbiased view as to which of these is better. So I'm actually going to start with the bottom line, which might seem a bit back to front, but for most people this is probably going to be the biggest factor. Um, and you may well already be aware of this, but on the one hand, QGIS is a completely free and open source piece of software. And as I said, for most people, this could well make your decision just like that. Um, so it's free and open source, which means it could be used for any purpose, whether it's for home use, whether it's for study, um, or whether you're going to be using it for commercial purposes and profiting from the work you do. QGIS is available to you. ArcGIS, on the other hand, is very much a commercial piece of software. You'll need to sort out a license if you want to be able to use it. Now, if you're a home user and you just want to experiment, play around, make some maps, um, then it is possible to get a home use license for around about, at the moment, I think £100. Uh, exact prices may vary according to where in the world you are and um, the, the kind of local pricing but you can get a home use license relatively inexpensively. However, if you're looking at using this for commercial purposes, then a kind of base ArcGIS desktop license begins somewhere in the ballpark of £1,500. Again, this may vary depending on exactly where in the world you are um, and what kind of license level you're looking at, things like that. And if you're looking at um, purchasing the maximum license level, all of the different extensions so that you can make use of, of the full range of, of kind of tools and analytical capabilities that ArcGIS has to offer, then you're quickly moving up into the, the many thousands, kind of five to ten thousand pounds, I would imagine, if you're going to actually purchase a license for, for everything. And that's a single use, single user license. Um, obviously, if you're looking at multiple licenses across an organization, then there will be kind of bulk licensing discounts. Um, and again, exactly what those are are likely to, to kind of vary depending on the, um, where you are and the, the deal you manage to strike with, with Esri. But you're certainly looking at a, a kind of multi thousand pound um, purchase. So one of the key questions that I'm going to be answering through the rest of this video is actually, why would you want to spend that much money when QGIS is completely free and open source? Um, what kind of situation might make you decide that you want to spend thousands of pounds on ArcGIS? And as I said, for many people, that answer will be none. You know, QGIS is the way you will want to go. But I do think there are some circumstances where actually that cost is justified um, and you will gain benefits from going down the ArcGIS route. Another key factor on top of cost is support, if, especially if you're going to be using this commercially. You know, knowing that you've got a reliable piece of software and that you can fix things if you're having problems is, is pretty important. So both of these, in my opinion, are very functional pieces of software. Both of them have small glitches and kind of hit up problems occasionally. But on the whole, I've not had any major problems using either of these. So, you know, I think that they're on a pretty even standing when it comes to kind of reliability and functionality. In terms of QGIS, um, obviously being free, you don't come with a support package, but there is an incredibly active and helpful user community and actually a whole host of forums out there. Um, I have to admit, in most cases, if I've ever hit upon a problem, 
All I have to do is Google it. Someone out there has already had the same problem and someone else has already provided an answer that I can, can work through. So it's very rare that I've ever come across a problem that I'm not able to solve almost straight away by just kind of looking up some resources online and finding a solution out there. If that's not sufficient, then there are paid support contracts available. Now, obviously, this counteracts um, some of the benefit of the fact that QGIS is completely free um, in itself. But there are a number of organizations out there which offer paid support contracts for QGIS users. Um, and again, the sums will vary depending on whether it's kind of just you and you just want occasional support, in which case they may do it on a, a kind of ad hoc basis. Um, up to having a kind of certain number of support hours across your company if you're a sl slightly larger organization. Um, ArcGIS, on the other hand, obviously comes with support included in that price. Uh, I have had to deal with Esri technical support recently, and I can vouch for the fact they are pretty responsive and helpful when it comes to, to resolving issues. So when I've had issues, um, they've managed to normally resolve them for me within at least a couple of days and I suspect if you had a kind of mission critical problem something that really needed to be resolved straight away in order to allow your business to function that they would would do their very best to to help support that um, so in both cases there's there's good support options available um, it depends which of those again appeals most and and feels most reliable to you um, another thing to notice in terms of ArcGIS, although it has a great deal of expense um, up front if you want to use it for commercial purposes, they do also have currently a startup program available. So if you're looking to kind of develop GIS applications, provide GIS services, um, there is the potential to sign up for that. And I think that gives you access if you get accepted onto the program to all of the ArcGIS software for, as far as I can remember, a period of about three years. So there are kind of lower cost options or ways to kind of get into using ArcGIS without the upfront cost if you're a small consultant or a, a startup company. Um, but on the other hand, if you want something that's reliably free forever, uh, then QGIS is, is going to give you that, that option. So cost aside, let's pretend for a moment that money is no object. What about the, the relative capabilities? Um, so until recently, one of the, the big limiting factors of the ArcGIS desktop suite has been that it was limited to 32-bit. So that meant it could only use up to 8 gig of RAM. It was limited in terms of, of file sizes that it could, could handle um, and generally wouldn't make use of the full computing resources available on most modern computers. Uh, that's one of the reasons that the in introduction of ArcGIS Pro um, a few years ago was so important actually ArcGIS Pro brings native 64-bit support to the ArcGIS desktop package. Um, as of QGIS 3, QGIS also has um, native 64-bit support. Um, all of the tools are available to hopefully make use of the, the full resources that you, you have available. Um, in terms of what they can do, so I could spend many hours doing a, a kind of blow by blow comparison of every technical aspect of the ArcGIS desktop package um, and QGIS. So as, as of creating this, uh, we're on QGIS 3.12. Uh, I think to summarize, they both have extensive ranges of analytical tools for carrying out geospatial analysis. Um, in my opinion, there's probably actually a broader range of tools available via QGIS. So QGIS comes with a pretty good range of spatial analysis tools kind of ready installed out of the box. Uh, but it also comes with both GRASS and Saga tools available. So GRASS and Saga are both available as kind of standalone desktop GIS packages. But again, because of their open source nature, um, all of the, or I'm not sure if it's quite all, but the majority of tools that are available through GRASS and Saga are also available um, through the QGIS processing toolbox. And that adds a huge array of functionality onto the kind of base functionality of QGIS. 
And then in addition, there are also plugins. So plugins are kind of tools that are developed separately to the main piece of QGIS software. Anybody can develop and contribute a plugin to the QGIS program. And they cover pretty much anything you can think of from very kind of basic functions, automatically copying a layer, for example, to extensive toolboxes that allow you to download, um, pre-process and classify satellite imagery and then carry out land cover change analysis all within a, a single toolbox. So the, the full range of um, QGIS plugins is huge. They cover all kinds of, of different sectors and it's expanding all the time as people contribute new plugins to the project. So whereas ArcGIS it's actually relatively uncommon for an entirely new tool to be added to the toolbox. Obviously, things do get tweaked at each update, um, but it doesn't develop anywhere near the same pace as QGIS in terms of um, additional plugins and updates to, to both plugins and the software itself. That said, ArcGIS does have an extensive range of, of analytical tools available via the toolboxes. Exactly how much of that you have access to will depend on how many of the toolboxes you have. And as I said, each toolbox comes with a cost of its own. So, you know, you can be adding several thousand pounds for, for each additional toolbox that you add on to the base um, ArcGIS desktop package. So for most users, you will want to kind of consider what your, your typical kind of analysis tasks are, what you're using GIS for and which toolboxes are most applicable um to the work that you're doing so both arcgis and qgis have 2d and 3d capabilities um, it used to be again with arcgis that you had to have the 3d analyst toolbox in order to access um, arcscene so arcscene is essentially arcgis desktops 3d viewer um, but again with the advent of arcgis pro actually arcgis pro Kind of combines a lot of the functionality of ArcMap and ArcScene previously and allows you to generate both 2D and 3D views within the, the same um, software package. So again, quite a big leap forwards in, in my opinion. Um, and while you may still need the 3D Analyst toolbox to access a lot of the actual um, 3D analysis functionality, you can visualize data um, using ArcGIS Pro in, in 3D. Um, whereas QGIS, as of QGIS 3, again, comes with a built-in 3D viewer. Um, it's slightly clunky still, in my opinion. It's, it's developing quite rapidly. Um, I wouldn't say it's as smooth and functional as the, the kind of 3D viewing capability in ArcGIS at the moment, although I have no doubt that that will continue to develop in the future and it won't be too long um, before it, it finds itself on a par. Um, but down at the bottom here on the left hand side, you'll see that I mentioned ArcGIS also comes with access to ArcGIS Online and the various kind of online services and functions that that, that provides. And I'm going to come on to this more later because in my opinion, it's some of these online services and the tools and data sets that it gives you access to that actually could add that value to ArcGIS and make it um, the preferable option for some users, not, not for everybody, um, but for some users, some of these tools are going to, to give it the edge, um, I suspect. So I'm actually going to skip over now and bring up both of these pieces of software side by side. So as I said, um, ArcGIS desktop actually consists of a number of modules, so ArcMap, ArcScene, ArcCatalog, and then the newer ArcGIS Pro. So I'm actually just gonna focus on ArcGIS Pro for now because as I said, in my opinion, it brings together a lot of the functionalities from all of those different previous modules and gives it a much more refined interface um, for example, it now has context sensitive menus. So I've just added a couple of layers in here. We have um, a topographic base map that comes from Esri. This isn't something that I've had to add in. When you first load up 
a new project with the map template, it will have this base map already in place. And I've just added in a raster layer and a vector layer. And you can see on the menu up here that as I change between these two layers, that actually the context sensitive menu alters. So I now have, if I'm on this raster layer, I have a series of tools uh, that are specific to handling raster data. And if I switch that to the vector layer, then I have another set of tools that are specific to working with um, vector data. So again, it's in some ways could be seen as quite minor, um, but it does make things easier to access. And to me, it just kind of gives ArcGIS Pro that kind of slicker, more modern feel. Whereas QGIS is highly functional, but still has the kind of static menus. You know, nothing obviously changes other than a few different tools kind of opening up when I switch between um, the layers over here. I've added in an OpenStreetMap base layer. So while this isn't something that automatically appears when you open a new project, um, you can see it comes with an OpenStreetMap layer already set up under XYZ tile layers. So both ArcGIS and QGIS can handle most common spatial data formats. Again, there will be some slight variations um, in terms of what they can do. Obviously, there are a number of kind of Esri proprietary formats out there, such as their um, personal geodatabases, for example. And while QGIS can access those now, um, I think it still has some limitations on functionality when compared to ArcGIS. So, you know, if you're trying to access Esri formats through QGIS, then it's, it's not that surprising that it won't handle them quite as well as, as ArcGIS itself will do. Um, other little bits, again, there's just slight differences between the two, um, and both have pros, both have cons. Um, one of the things I particularly like with QGIS, because I work with elevation data quite a bit, is the fact it will allow me to visualise elevation data as a hillshade without me needing to create a separate hillshade layer. Um, and if I set the Z factor correctly so that it actually looks sensible, okay, then I get a nice hillshade effect. Um, whereas this is something that ArcGIS still doesn't seem to have quite caught up with. If I right click on the layer, I can go to symbology to see the different display options. I can stretch, I can use discrete values, I can classify it into, into different bands. Um, I can use vector fields. This is something that, as far as I can remember, still isn't quite native to QGIS, although it's possible that I'm trying to remember now whether they've added that since I was last working with vector data, but it's certainly, if it's not native now, it's something that can be added in um, as a, a plugin. So, like I said, I'm not going to spend hours going through every kind of tool and comparing them for each of these pieces of, of software. Um, but I did mention the online functionality of ArcGIS and the fact that I think for some users, this could tip the scales in terms of whether the cost is worthwhile. So for example, um, there are a couple of ways that we can use this. Actually, it's, first of all, if I go to the map menu and as if I'm gonna add a new layer into my map, We'll see down here, first of all, we have this portal section. So this portal essentially relates to ArcGIS Online. So I can create layers elsewhere, upload them to ArcGIS Online. And because I kind of license um, ArcGIS Pro by logging in with my username and password, I can then access all of my content directly through there. Um, obviously, it may take some time to download larger layers. But I also have access to something called Living Atlas. And this is kind of a curated set of layers that Esri have put together. And it contains thousands of items. Um, I couldn't say off the top of my head exactly how many, but we can see here we've got kind of categories, trending, base maps, imagery. It takes a few seconds to load up. We can see we've got coronavirus data popping up now. Um, Modis thermal hotspots and fire activity. 
Sentinel-2 imagery, we've got world traffic data, um, and if I put a search term in here, let's try flood for example, then I can get live stream gauges, flood risk data, um, so all kinds of, of different data sets linked to, to that. So it can be a massive time saver if you're looking at bringing in data layers to use in your analysis and you don't want to have to spend a lot of time searching, downloading and preparing those data sets. The Living Atlas has you know, a huge range of data that you can draw on and not only visualize, but also use as part of your analysis. And to me, that's one of the, the potential cost saving benefits that comes with, with ArcGIS would be through the time savings that you could gain by being able to make use of these online layers um, rather than having to, to go through the data downloading um, and processing yourself. And obviously, if you've got coding skills and you're working in something like QGIS, it's entirely possible to, to automate that process, but it is just going to take a little bit more work to, to be able to set up in the first place. Um, the other way that we can make use of this is through analysis tools and actually it comes up at the top here um, I didn't have to search enrich so the enrich function within ArcGIS is another hugely powerful tool um, you can see here this consumed credits so you can purchase credits to basically make use of ArcGIS's online um, functionality so it's it's another cost factor but it does I think with a subscription, you will get access to a certain number of credits um, and you can purchase extra credits if you want to carry out more analysis tasks. But I could say select my building layer and then I can click to add variables to these buildings. And basically, again, we now have a huge curated database of all kinds of particularly demographic data. So I can add population data, income data, ages, household makeups, let's just go into this one. So total households, average household size. Now, obviously that's not gonna work on a building level, um, but if we're working with district data, for example, then we can enrich that district data with the number of households um, that were contained there. Um, key facts, so total population, households, purchasing power, so a lot of these are kind of designed for demographic and business analysis. Uh, so age breakdowns, male, female, educational attainment, marital status, um, unemployment levels. So you can see that a lot of these are going to be useful factors if we're trying to understand the demographics of an area and relate that to other factors, whether that's crime, whether it's sales, uh, whether we're trying to kind of model the type of areas around our stores for example um, you can pull in demographic data see what the demographics are around that that particular location identify other similar areas to focus on um, or even draw some of these variables into things like regression modeling to try and understand why perhaps sales in one area are better than sales in another area so as I said, not something that everybody's going to want to use, not something that's going to be beneficial um, for many of the applications you could be interested in. On the other hand, if that is your area, um, and if you're going to be spending a lot of time drawing down demographic data, working in different locations through the world, and obviously this is a global database, so you know whether you're carrying out analysis in the UK or analysis in India, uh, many of those variables will be available. Exactly what there is will vary by location. But, you know, I can see how for some people that would be a massive time saving to simply be able to go onto the Enrich tool and add um, those data sets, those variables to your existing data, rather than having to spend a lot of time searching around, finding the local portal for the area that you're looking in. In some cases, the data sets might not be readily available. They may have extra costs associated anyway. Um, and these kind of online um, databases that Esri gives you access to kind of allows you to pull those data sets together relatively easily and only kind of paying for the, the chunks that you use. 
So with QGIS, you know, we can link in to many different types of data. We can access XYZ tile services, web map services, um, most types of, of kind of online database that you can think of. But unless there's a plugin that somebody's created to kind of facilitate access, it doesn't have these kind of curated data repositories that we can immediately link into our data sets in, in the same way. And the other thing that ArcGIS Pro allows us to do, um, that we can do with the, the kind of Esri ecosystem, is to actually share our data to a web map. And what that will basically do is allow us to take a selection or all of our layers with the styling that we've got applied and actually instantly or well, at least with minimal intervention, allow us to upload those to the ArcGIS online platform and allow people to then access them, you know, give the link to our client and actually allow them to visualize the results of our analysis for themselves, turn layers on and off. Um, and we can even carry out some additional analysis within the, the ArcGIS online environment. Um, that's not to say that we can't do any of those things within QGIS, um, because again, if we go to the plugins, then if I can find um, the, the tools that I'm looking for, there we go, QGIS to web. So actually we have plugins within QGIS that will allow us to take our layers and export an interactive web map. Again, it, it, it requires a little bit more manual intervention. It will give us the data sets um, and HTML documents that we need to be able to upload. Uh, we still then have to kind of upload those to our own server and allow people to, to access them. Um, there are services out there which allow you to kind of upload QGIS maps and automatically generate web maps in a much similar way to the way that the, the ArcGIS online works. Um, but again, I think there will be costs involved, certainly if you're kind of regularly doing this and having quite a few views. And it just takes a little bit more setup as opposed to the, the kind of more streamlined workflow that Esri provide you with on account of having everything kind of tied in within a, a single ecosystem. Uh, we also have the QGIS to 3JS, which provides similar functionality, but actually allowing you to export 3D web maps rather than simple 2D web maps. So, you know, much of what ArcGIS can offer is available within QGIS, but often, as I said, just with a slightly less streamlined workflow um, and a bit more kind of manual intervention, ultimately a bit more time involved in order to achieve the same, the same result. And as I said, you know, in my mind, that is arguably the justification for some users in switching to ArcGIS. It's really the ability to save time through making use of things like the Living Atlas and um, the enrich data um, functions that, that they provide, which could save hours of, of work. Um, and then to easily communicate those findings through interactive um, web maps and something that I've not really discussed, but the ArcGIS story maps, which allow you to kind of integrate map views with kind of more standard charts and presentation features um, to communicate kind of more of a, a narrative story to, to the client. Again, you know, we could do this with QJS, we could export the maps that we want and perhaps do it in a slightly more static way or take advantage of, of kind of third party online um, tools to facilitate doing a, a similar kind of kind of thing. Uh, but as I said, the process will just be a little bit more time consuming and a little bit less less streamlined. So the key advantage is really QGIS, you know, the big one for most people is going to be the price. It's free. And if that's your key factor, if you want something that's going to give you a powerful set of geospatial analysis tools um, with a really helpful user community, and tools and plugins that are going to support pretty much any application, you know, QGIS is the way to go, no brainer. 
Um, on the other hand, if you're working in an industry where time is money, um, you know, the quicker you can push these projects through, then the more profitable your, your organization can be and actually making use of things like Living Atlas and the enriched data functions are going to help you be able to do that and making use of the ArcGIS online functionality, interactive web maps and story maps are going to help you communicate those results in it more easily, more effectively, and again, save time, then perhaps that, that cost of um, the ArcGIS ecosystem, so ArcGIS desktop, but the online services that come with it, you know, will be justified in, in those instances. So in my view, it really depends on what you're trying to do and what's most important to you. Um, for my money, for the vast majority of users, QGIS is without a doubt the way to go. You know, it gives you all of those powerful tools. You can produce maps, you can produce 3D visualizations, and there is the functionality there to create web maps, share your data with users, with clients in a whole variety of ways. But if you want the benefits of those kind of more streamlined workflows, those pre-existing curated data sets, and potentially of having the kind of service contracts, um, technical support that comes with it, then, you know, maybe for you, ArcGIS actually is going to be worth its money um, and you'll be able to kind of make those costs back um, with the, the work that you're doing. So there we go. It's not a clear answer, I know, but that's because different people need different things. So as I said, which is best for most people, QJS. But if your business can leverage the tools and services that the Esri um, and the ArcGIS ecosystem provide, then ArcGIS might just be the best solution for you. So I hope you found that useful. Hopefully that's given you a bit more insight into some of the, the differences and capabilities of both ArcGIS and QGIS. Um, and if it has been helpful, then please remember to, to like and subscribe um, and check out my other videos. Thanks a lot.